looking at the limestone interior of the Abu Ruwash pyramid and this is the core and we can descend into the core in this unique structure unlike the other pyramids oh my god what's this wow very deep pit that, that, I, that looks to me like a boat pit. No way. Look at these lines. Look Same at these striations. Like exactly. Look at these striations. And also the higher parts and the lower parts shows that it's, it was not exactly. all cut at once. Exactly. It was yeah. like, Especially know, here. This. Here and here. Exactly. Yeah, here and there. Exactly. See what the blade came back. And we are talking about red granite from Aswan. How did they bring it up here? We are here in a, in a mountainous region. The Giza Plateau is one of the most iconic and mysterious ancient sites on Earth, home to the Great Pyramid, the Sphinx, and numerous other relics of antiquity. It has captured the imaginations of explorers, historians, and enthusiasts for centuries. While many can easily picture the grandeur of these structures, few realize that these monuments are still steeped in mystery. Despite centuries of study, questions remain unanswered about who built them, and more intriguingly, why? Just five miles to the southwest of Giza, within the lesser-known necropolis of Zoyet el Aryan, lies a site that may hold the key to solving some of Egypt's greatest mysteries. In May 1900, Italian architect and Egyptologist Alessandro Bassanti was researching the Leia Pyramid at Zoyet el Aryan. Having previously discovered the tomb of Akhenaten, Bassanti had earned a respected reputation in his field. However, the Leia Pyramid disappointed him. It was crumbling, incomplete, and devoid of artifacts. Like other Egyptologists before him, Barsanti concluded the pyramid had been abandoned due to the death of the king who commissioned it. Discouraged, Barsanti began his return journey to Giza, but he took an alternative route along an upper plateau, offering sweeping views of the landscape. It was here that he noticed something unusual, scattered granite fragments and fine granite powder. Evidence of stone cutting. Basanti immediately suspected this was where ancient workers had prepared stone for a hidden tomb. Intrigued, Basanti returned to Giza and assembled a team to explore the site. Within two days of excavation, his intuition proved correct. Beneath the sand, Basanti uncovered the entrance to an enormous limestone pit. To his surprise, the pit was filled with large limestone blocks, each weighing several tons, seemingly thrown in without care, suggesting a deliberate attempt to conceal what lay below. On December 8th, at a depth of 21 meters, the team uncovered a significant find, a large pink granite block. Granite was not only more valuable than limestone, but also harder to work with, reserved for only the most important structures. This discovery convinced Basanti that they had found something special. As excavation continued, more pink granite blocks were revealed, suggesting a massive subterranean structure. By February 1905, Barsanti and his team uncovered a 30-ton granite block that seemed to mark the bottom of the pit. Barsanti believed this was the entrance to a subterranean world, potentially filled with tombs and treasures. Complicating the mystery, his team also found inscriptions carved into the stones. Despite sending sketches to Egyptologists in Giza and Cairo, no one could agree on their meaning or origin. This deepened Barsanti's conviction that something extraordinary was hidden below. Barsanti used machinery to move the granite blocks, but they were interlocked like puzzle pieces. Digging further, Barsanti made his most astonishing discovery yet. An oval-shaped vat carved from pink granite polished to a mirror-like finish. It had been carefully sealed with layers of lime and clay. When the team removed the lid, they found no treasure, only a thin black residue along the walls. Barsanti hypothesized that the vat once contained a liquid offering that had evaporated over time. Despite the disappointment, Barsanti believed the mysterious vat held great significance. Why had the builders gone to such lengths to protect it? Determined to solve the puzzle, Basanti continued his excavation, uncovering a massive cork-like granite block 
sealing off what he believed were hidden chambers below. Word of Barsanti's discoveries spread, but many of his colleagues remained skeptical. They insisted the pit was merely the foundation of an unfinished pyramid. However, Barsanti pressed on, and two events seemed to support his theory. First, his team uncovered a well-finished staircase at the pit's northern end. Too refined for laborers, as if it led to ceremonial chambers. Then, a torrential rainstorm flooded the pit, only for the water level to drop suddenly, as if it had seeped into a hidden chamber below. Despite mounting obstacles, including the complex interlocking granite blocks and dwindling funds, Basanti continued his work. By 1906, however, he ran out of money and had to stop the excavation. He spent years searching for new funding and finally secured it in 1911. Yet even with renewed efforts, the work proved too difficult. And once again, Barsanti was forced to abandon the project before uncovering what lay beneath the pit. He died in 1917, leaving the mystery unresolved. Barsanti's work sparked a lingering curiosity about Zawiyet el Aryan, but the site lay dormant for decades after his death. In the 1950s, it briefly resurfaced as the set for the movie The Land of the Pharaohs, but it was soon forgotten again. Barsanti's notes eventually caught the attention of Italian scholars Vito Maragioglio and Celeste Rinaldi, who set out to continue his work in the 1960s. However, their efforts were cut short when, in 1964, the Egyptian government restricted access to Zawiyet el Aryan, designating it as a military base. This abrupt restriction of access raised suspicions. Why was the government blocking off this site just as interest in it was reviving. To this day, many Egyptologists assert there is no mystery at Zawiyet el Aryan, claiming the pit is simply the foundation of an unfinished pyramid. Yet Barsanti, who studied Egypt's ancient wonders for decades, was adamant that this was no ordinary pyramid foundation. If the pit was just a foundation, why go to such lengths to construct a floor made of interlocking granite blocks held together by strong mortar and designed to be nearly impossible to move. Furthermore, why use valuable pink granite, which had to be transported from Aswan nearly 600 miles away if the structure was to be buried under a pyramid? Limestone, far easier to source and work with, would have sufficed. Then, there was the mystery of the inscriptions Barsanti found at the site. Scholars to this day remain divided on their meaning. And what about the finely crafted oval vat? If this was a pyramid foundation, why go to such great lengths to intricately carve this vat, polish it, and seal it with lime and clay? In recent years, a new theory has emerged, connecting the mystery of Zawiyet el Aryan to the Great Pyramid of Giza. For centuries, the Great Pyramid has puzzled historians. Conventional wisdom holds that it was built as a tomb for Pharaoh Khufu, but no human remains, treasures, or artifacts have ever been found inside, leading many to question this explanation. In the 1960s, Edward Kunkel proposed a radical theory. The Great Pyramid was not a tomb, but a massive water pump designed to irrigate the desert. Kunkel argued that the pyramid's internal chambers and passages functioned as part of a hydraulic system. His theory was met with skepticism, but some engineers saw merit in the idea. They pointed out that a ram pump, which uses gravity to move water, could have worked on the scale Kunkel proposed. By the 1990s, marine engineer John Cadman took Kunkel's theory further. He studied the pyramid's subterranean chamber and found signs of water damage. Cadman built a scale model of the pyramid's subterranean chamber and confirmed that it could function as a water pump. His experiments led to an unexpected discovery. The pyramid generated powerful compression waves, pulses that could create electricity. This raised a startling question. Could the ancient Egyptians have used the Great Pyramid to generate electricity? Cadman's research suggested it was possible. The pyramid's outer casing of insulating white limestone, its granite interior, and its gold capstone all pointed to a design capable of generating and harnessing electrical energy. With this new perspective, researchers revisited the mystery of Zawiyet el Aryan. 
Could the pit have been part of an ancient electrical system connected to the Great Pyramid? Some believe the oval vat may have played a key role in this system, with the black residue providing evidence of a long-lost process for generating electricity. Perhaps this is why the Egyptian government sealed off Zawiyat el Aryan in the 1960s. What secrets lie beneath the pit? Could it hold proof of an ancient civilization's advanced technology? As research continues, we may one day uncover the truth about an ancient Egypt far more advanced than we ever imagined. If you were captivated by this video's journey, prepare to be transported once more. Our next video unveils the enigma of the forgotten pyramids of Miro, a hidden world of ancient wonders waiting to be rediscovered. I mean, it's just crazy. We've talked about, you know, alternative theories to how it was, how the pyramids were built. Yeah. I'm willing to accept that the Great Pyramid was largely completed by the ancient Egyptians. But remember that the ancient Egyptians tell us in many of their texts that everything they knew was a legacy. legacy. It was all an inheritance of the gods, and right. I don't construe the gods as aliens.